Ralph Glidden has a rather interesting story to tell, a story which he continued to tell from the grave. While digging on Catalina Island in the Gulf of California between 1919 and 1928, he found, according to him and numerous newspaper articles from the time, numerous skeletons. But what made his claims particularly interesting, however, was the claim that their average height was around 7 to 9 feet. The question arrived at by all those who have heavily researched his story is, where are these skeletons today? Could it really have just been a publicity stunt? Or did Glidden actually somehow find the remains of a lost race of giants? Santa Catalina Island, also just known as Catalina Island, is one of the Channel Islands off the coast of California in USA. The Channel Islands holds the title as the location of the earliest evidence for seafaring in the Americas, and also the earliest evidence of humans in North America. Ralph Glidden, who worked on the islands for several decades, was an amateur archaeologist who successfully uncovered ancient burial sites on Catalina Island. From 1919 to 1928, it is said that he excavated more than 800 grave sites from about 100 individual locations around the island. In addition to finding thousands of artifacts, he also stated that he dug up almost 4,000 human skeletons, a claim which has often received a lot of negative attention, many claiming he lacked respect for the dead. However, his reasoning was quite profound. He claimed that there once lived an advanced ancient race of tall, fair-haired Indians on Catalina Island and the adjacent islands. With the male adults around 7 feet in height, Glidden lost his sponsor after digging for almost 10 years, and the general opinion today is that he was just bluffing about finding giant skeletons, with the motive of creating interest and making money. However, he never made much money from his finds and received little financial attention. Additionally, Ralph Glidden was not the first to find a giant skeleton on Catalina Island. According to Pittsburgh Press, July 20, 1913, and also the Daily Telegraph on July 26, a German naturalist named Dr. A. W. Furstenon uncovered an 8-foot skeleton on the island. The skeleton was found with artifacts such as mortars, pestles, and arrowheads, all different from the ordinary Indian burials, plus a strange flat stone bearing unknown symbols. Furstenan had, while in Mexico, heard the legend regarding the noble race of giants that had once lived on Catalina Island, long before the white man had arrived. He would find the skeleton along Avalon Bay, in black hard sand, yet, alas, the remains have since vanished. All over the islands, there are countless reports. According to several newspaper articles, Santa Rosa Island was the site of a dig in 1959, where they discovered several skeletons more than 7 feet tall. The tops of the skulls were painted red, and the skulls were described as having sloped foreheads. On San Nicolas Island west of Catalina in 1897, a party of relic hunters stayed three weeks on the barren island, and Newark Daily Advocate would subsequently tell of them finding bones of a giant race on San Nicolas Island. Whether these bones finally made it into private collections is unknown. In 1930, Glidden was ready to sell his collection, including his whole series of secrets regarding the island. In return, he requested an annual annuity for life, funding for five expeditions, and the necessary financing for various planned publications that included a large monograph chronicling all of his excavations. But it seems, sadly, regardless of Glidden's confidence, nobody wanted to buy his miraculous finds, and in 1962, at the age of 81 years old, he sold his collection for a mere $5,000. Just six years later, Glidden died. However, in March 2012, an unlabeled box was discovered resting deep within the Catalina Island Museum archives. In this box was Glidden's collection of secret records, among which was, most importantly, a series of unique photographs showing Ralph Glidden indeed excavating one of his authentic, giant, and very ancient skeletons. Sardinia is undoubtedly one of the most overlooked areas of ancient interest to be found anywhere in the world. Located within the Mediterranean, it's a large Italian island with 2,000 kilometers of coastline dotted with sandy beaches. 
the interior, however, contains some of the most heavily concentrated ancient ruins to be found anywhere. Thousands of structures, known as naragis, litter the island. Stone structures masterfully shaped like beehives, often with domed roofs, that from inside reveal the mastery of the original constructors. With the largest and oldest of which, known as Sunuraji in Barumini. The Nuraji is a unique feature of the island of Sardinia that, according to mainstream academia, were constructed during the Nuragic Age, between 1900 and 730 BC. However, the Nuragi is not the only compelling ancient ruin to be found upon the island, that regardless of the mundane academic explanation for their origins, are indicative of an enigmatic, highly capable, lost group of ancient beings, locally said to have been of tremendous size. Known as the Giant's Graves, or Tumba de Gigantes locally, the legends that can be found still circulating within the local population tell of giants having once been responsible for these structures, with the graves supporting such claims due to their enormous scale. However, predictably, academics argue that the size of these tombs were merely due to them being mass graves, although any remains from these supposed neurogic inhabitants dated to the Bronze Age remain elusive. Additionally, many of these giant graves, which number around 800, are constructed using enormous megalithic stones many tons in weight. This use of enormous stones is strangely absent from the 2,000 or so Naraji that are instead constructed from more manageably sized stones. However, interestingly, legends in other areas of the Med, such as the Navita Destudones found in Menorca, also built with manageable stones, shares these legends of giants having once been responsible a structure built for human habitation by supposed giants using similarly sized stones as the Naraja. Gantia, found on yet another Mediterranean island called Gozo, shares these same local legends of giant builders. Is it mere coincidence that all of these ancient ruins are found within the same global vicinity as each other? An extremely ancient ritual, still practiced within Sardinia, predating Christianity by a considerable time, could hold clues to the construction of these giant's graves. A carnival so old, the story behind its purpose has been lost throughout the ages. Depicting monsters of giant proportions, often covered in cowbells and adorned with horns or goat's heads, these monsters march through the local town controlled as they go by human-looking counterparts, named the Izohadores. Known as the Carnival of the Mamuthonas, what exactly the Mamuthonas are, or indeed possibly were, is also lost to history. Although these beasts, who grunt and stomp through the town center, are tethered and controlled by the Izohadores as they go. Were these mysterious beasts once a real creature? Were they utilized for their strength and size by these Izoadoras to build the inexplicable structures still found within Sardinia? Are these widespread yet openly shared local legends passed down from generation to generation pertaining to giants having once been responsible for Sardinia's intriguing ruins a true story? With the visually stunning ancient ritual still preserved by the Sardinians, clues to the origins of the giant's graves and indeed the Naragis? We find the spectacle practiced by the Sardinians, along with their local legends surrounding the giant's graves, highly compelling. In our previous video, we presented a hypothesis, a theory believed by many, one of a now lost or possibly hidden race of ancient giants. Surprisingly, however, Recently, although China is seen as an infamously secretive country, with many tombs and ancient pyramids of gargantuan proportions rarely aerial photographed, let alone explored, it seems that they have, at last, stolen the archaeological world stage with the announcement of a discovery which we may relish, but those whom these remains rest just beyond the clutches of 
we would presume rather get a hold of themselves to study and then store away in hidden archives, far from public view, an ongoing effort we have personally read of, dating back to the early 1900s. An ancient graveyard, complete with over 500 giant human remains, has not only been accidentally discovered, but publicly exhumed and most crucial of all, photographed for all the world to see within China. Could this be a retaliatory move with other motives at play? If our previously mentioned theory is true, it would enable man to explain the inexplicably, seemingly impossible size of many of the world's megaliths, and indeed still standing megalithic structures of the world. How a pyramidal, treasury, and many other ancient architectures, lintels, and top stones, often weighing many hundreds of tons, were not only transported from quarries many hundreds of miles, but placed aloft many meters with seeming ease. Furthermore, we have in the past not only postulated and have also presented reams of witness testimony and photographic cooperation, still to be found in newspaper archives across the Western world, describing these finds, but also the Smithsonian's efficiency in not only dealing with the matter, but disappearance of any further reporting, thus expiration. This also supporting the reason for lost pieces of the puzzle, which is inhibiting us from unlocking the secrets to the site's construction. Perhaps we may never know the true motivations for such a controversial exposure in China. But nonetheless, the resulting fallout of proof presented for our community is a step closer to the truth, the untangling of a tired and tangled web of lies in which many have weaved. For at the bottom of Pandora's box, there is always hope. We have in the past covered the remarkable legends and in particular the intriguing enormous tombs which cover the Mediterranean island of Sardinia, long claimed as the resting places of some 800 or so ancient giants who once belonged to a now lost race of beings. It is undeniable that the scale of these inner chambers is of considerable size, most capable of housing remains of a size of 15 feet or more in height. There are, undeniably, many compelling pieces of written reports, and indeed photographic evidence of the discovery of ancient giant remains. Yet nearly all seemingly vanish into thin air, many shortly following the mention of the involvement of certain academic institutions, such as the claim 3,000 or so remains claimed to have been excavated by Ralph Glidden on Santa Catalina Island, located within the Channel Islands during the early 20th century, all of which now lost. However, like the many ancient Uparts we share, there are that rare few which have fortunately made their way into the hands of private collectors or individuals lacking any agenda but that of revealing the truth of these objects' existence. And one such scenario involves that of a Luigi Muscus, a man who actually owns farmland on the island of Sardinia, upon which he claims to have found gigantic molars of a hominid appearance. In tandem with her appearance on the program Coast to Coast AM in the US, Paola Harris shared his extraordinary photos. After looking into the artifacts ourselves, we have indeed found an argument which will undoubtedly be used to dismiss the finds as that of ancient cave bear teeth, yet the root patterning and indeed crown of the molar like that of the partial jaw also shared seem to us to be more reminiscent of giant human skulls rather than the patterning of prehistoric bears. What's more, it must not be ignored that surrounding the claimed discovery site are indeed the aforementioned and gigantic ruins and the legends of individuals large enough to have once housed such teeth in their mouths, which all persist on the island to this day. What do you think? An ancient giant's molar and lower jaw? Or simply that of the remains of a prehistoric animal? It is a legend and indeed series of discoveries which we find highly compelling. <laughs>